YouTube, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I don't often start these videos walking around, but this time I am. And I've got with me this, the new 2021 Honda XADV. I like the look of this bike. We're gonna have some fun. Today, I'm gonna decide whether this is a scooter or an adventure bike. To me and to everyone else, it looks like a scooter. The Forza 750, which it sits alongside its sister, is in the scooter category. This is in the adventure category. So let's go out today, have a mini adventure, and see if this is up to the job. But before we get on with that, I want you to listen to this exhaust. It sounds absolutely fantastic with the standard can. Bad, eh? Not bloody bad. Right, so let's get on and have a little bit of a play. The plan for today is we're going to find some nice country lanes. I'm actually going to take her down that road I took the Forza down. If you haven't seen the Forza 750 video, go and check that out. I shall leave a link to that downstairs and also on one of the cars at the end of the video. And the reason for that is there's probably quite a comparison between the two. One's kind of a luxury tourer and this is the adventure off-road style. But as I said, the aim of the day is to go out and have some fun, have a little bit of an explore. I've got nothing planned apart from one road that I know I'm going to go down and that's a little bit off-roady. That's all I'm going to say on that till I get there. We're also going to do a walk round at some point as well, just to show you guys around the bike, show you the ins and outs, some of the things I like, that sort of thing, and put some specifications on the screen and tell you a little bit more about the bike and then go through the dashboard. Now, if you're here and you're new and you've never been on one of my reviews, I tell you statistics about myself so you know how I get on with the ergonomics and how it fits me and how it suits me. I am six foot two, wide in the shoulder, long in the legs and touching just over 18 stone. Also, I'd like to take this time to thank you Doble's Motorcycles down in Coulston for giving me this bike. Once again, go and check them out. I shall leave the link to their website downstairs. And also, I shall leave the link to the specifications for this bike from Honda down there as well. Right, so what's new for this model over the last model? Uh, there's quite a bit evidently. They've changed the bodywork. I think they've changed a little bit with the frame. They've made it lighter. The engine's got more poke. They've upped the rev limiter and it's throttled by wire so it's got rider modes and other little tricks up its sleeve. It's got this nice TFT 5 inch dashboard that's quite customizable and I'll go through that when we do the walk round. Hopefully, when I did it on the fort side, I just kind of uh, winged it and I missed out a few things. So let's kick this off with the ergonomics. That seems about fair. As I just said, I'm six foot two, 18 stone, wide in the shoulder, long in the leg. I've got quite long thigh bones, just for a little bit of reference. And uh, so far, it's quite nice. I wouldn't say perfect, but it's quite nice. It's a little bit cramped. Compared to the Forza, the Forza felt like it was bigger. Now I'd say the reason this feels smaller is because everything's raised up a little bit, so I would assume the footboards are slightly higher. Now I'm not saying I haven't got any room, I have, I've got plenty of room. I could put my feet at the front there, but where the Forza it had much bigger frontal area. So it gave you a little bit more weather protection down there. But the bonus of having more cutouts is I can put my heels on there and kind of splay my feet out. If you don't mind doing that, that's not a problem. You can put them forward, you've got midpoints and you can put them back kind of tucked under you a little bit so you can get a little bit more leverage around the bends and also with the XADV I know the old one I don't know whether you can get it with this one but you can get off-road kind of foot pegs for the back where they bolt on just behind the footboards and that gives you off-road proper foot pegs that you can stand up on now if you do want to stand up on this you've got to raise the handlebars especially if you're me if you've got slightly shorter legs than me it'd be perfect for me it's just not perfect because the hump in the seat pushes me slightly too far forward i would get used to it but at the moment it feels quite small as in snug not as in tiny not as in like a 125 scooter but as in compared to the forza and the africa twin that i just got off of. <laughs> i think that was the problem when i did the forza i got off my super cub onto the Forza, whereas this I've got off my Africa Twin straight onto this, so you can see where I'm coming from. So that's the ergonomics for the feet. Bars wise, I love them. They remind me pretty much of my Africa Twin. They're nice and wide. 
plenty of leverage on these bars and because they're proper bars you've got plenty of uh, adjustment as well you can put bar risers on them you can put them forward or back just to suit you gotta watch the crap in the road and again i love the fact that the brakes are on the handlebars the rear brake is just sitting here so i can adjust without worrying about my feet it really isn't slow it actually feels faster than I'm going it's a nice trick it's pulling I'm looking down and I'm under the speed limit sometimes and uh, it's pulling a trick where I feel like I'm going really fast I think because you're not supposed to be doing that on this oh she sounds fantastic and this compared to the Forza just on this little blasty road here this handles better I'd say this handles not a lot but you can certainly feel it you can certainly feel it's more sprightly in the bends but you've got more maneuverability it's a lot easier to throw from side to side just on this little initial blast very impressed indeed I was impressed on the Forza it blew my mind on how good it was but whereas that I knew I was on a scooter this is it's a bike it's a motorcycle, it's blurred the lines. I said it last time when I took one out. These are blurring the lines now. They're just bikes, I call them all bikes. Let's just drop the scooter category. Unless it's got the engine strapped to the back wheel like a traditional scooter. Let's stop putting these things in scooter categories and just put them in the categories where they belong. It's very good at low speeds, very well balanced. It is not waving either side at all it's really really smooth planted at those low speeds it's astonishing it carries its weight really low i wasn't getting onto that but as soon as i stuck behind that horse it kind of showed it up which means it will be very easy to ride in traffic and hopefully we won't do that today i never plan to ride in traffic i know some of you guys buy these bikes to do the commute and the traffic and all that but uh, forget about that any bike can go through traffic it's just a question of patience if you've got a wide bike it takes longer if you've got a slim bike it goes through simple as that right so back to the ergonomics of it the mirrors the screen all that sort of stuff very good i've got the screen on the higher setting this one does have an adjustable screen it is manual you just got to flick that down there pull it out and then adjust it up and down when i had it on low it was directing the wind straight in my face so therefore too much wind to record and this crash helmet whistles so absolutely pointless where it is now it's absolutely lovely i've got just a little bit of wind on the top of the head literally that much on the top of the crash helmet this screen is slightly better than the forza for the top of the crash helmet now where the forza is better than this is on the arms because the forza gives you no airflow whatsoever or a little bit you get a little bit on the elbows and a little bit on the shoulders where this you've got more air around the shoulders and the elbows but they've done a clever thing and it's nothing fancy you can't see it it's obviously done in the wind tunnel where you don't get any buffeting it's wind it's almost like the wind off a naked bike so you get the wind but it's not sort of like chattering it's not buffeting it's a very uh, <laughs> if there's such a thing it's a very pleasant wind i don't know what that means but uh, i'm trying to explain it's windy but not offensive i think that's what i'm trying to do you do get the wind up your sleeves as you can see there so if you put the little guards on top which is an aftermarket extra i know because they're the same hand guards as my africa twin so i've got a little wind deflector on the top and it just stops the wind going up your arms but on a day like this because it is quite warm it's nice to get the wind around the chest but this bit essentially is more of a bubble as i said air around the shoulders elbows and right at the top of the crash helmet but no buffeting whatsoever none mirrors really really good i prefer them here to actually mount it on the bike and i can see behind me they're the same mirrors as my africa twin and uh, a little bit of adjustment and i can see perfectly well behind me very very nice right engine as i said it's up slightly on peak power and you've got slightly more in the rev range and you really notice that the last one i liked but compared with this one because this has got throttle by wire and it's got the rider modes this sport mode it makes it so much more lively it really is good and i said on the forza that this dct box 
really works well with this 750 engine across the range whether that be a 750X Forza or this it really suits the characteristics of this engine you, you're probably not going to go off-road we are today but 99% of people will not go off-road with this this is uh, one of those crossovers like an SUV crossover so it looks the part but it's not really designed to go off-road you will see videos of people out there going crazy going off-road doing all sorts of stunts and mad stuff on them and that's fine people can do that <laughs> you can there'll be all sorts of people doing all sorts of stupid stuff on all sorts of bikes but it doesn't mean that that's what the majority of people are going to do the majority of people are going to buy this because it is easy to get on with and easy to ride and very very good looking that is just my opinion i'm putting that out there early that i think this looks absolutely stunning i really do right handling on the road the characteristics very very nice indeed it has got a, a longish wheelbase so it's very very stable it's very uh, not plush it's not as plush as the Forza because I think the Forza seat is a lot more squidgy but it feels nice it's a nice place to be for distance you could ride this all day if you just do some minor adjustments and get used to it you will find this very very comfortable as I say you can adjust the screen which is a massive bonus so if you are taller than me you can even put a little extension on the top and get a little bit more wind protection around there I'm not sure how it mess up the wind flow but you might be able to do that on roads like this absolutely fantastic it's so smooth through the bends if the roads are smooth it's really really smooth and even with some of the potholes and the little indentations and the rough roads we got nowadays it smooths it out the suspension does a really really good job but on little roads like this just poodling around just effortless through the corners effortless i'm not pushing it you can see that we're not going banzai crazy you know that by now new tires not my bike we're not idiots you know <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to pull off the road in a minute on a little dirt track at the side i'm going to give you guys a walk around go through the bike and then we're going to do a little bit of off-road riding we're going to put it in gravel mode and see what she's like on the dirty stuff right so here we go we're going to do the walk round of this the mighty <laughs> and i'm going to call it that because it's a it is a mighty scooter this is the xadv by honda this is the brand new 2021 model let me know down in the descriptions box what you think of this do you think it's as good looking as i do i think this looks absolutely amazing stunning looking by and now i'm going to keep calling it a scooter which is going to annoy people because it's not really a scooter plus they put it in their adventure category, not the scooter category. I wouldn't put it there. I'd put it in the scooter or make a new segment called the adventure scooter. Simply because for me to be an adventure bike, you have to have at least a 19 inch on the front. And that's wheel, by the way. Don't go there. <laughs> right, so seeing as I was talking about the wheels, that was a nice little link. Let's get in with the wheels. Let's get straight into it. Right, on the front, you've got this beautiful little number here upside down forks nissan calipers disc either side and it's a 17 inch wheel and it's running 120 70 17s on the front let's skip straight to the back that one is slightly smaller and that one is a 160 60 15 and what this bike has as well although it's got spokes they go onto the outside of the rim so they are running tubeless tires there are no tubes in here not like my africa twin which has tubes this has none so if you do get a puncture it's just a simple plug and play oh what a beautiful day absolutely stunning right down here we got the footboards and as i said you've got a foot forward position there You've got a mid mount there and then you can put your feet back there now on the older version they did an off-road peg that kind of sat around this area here i'm not 100 percent sure where it sat you'd have to have a little look and that gave you just a little bit more leverage for off-roading and just another option for your feet basically and i thought that was a pretty good touch while we're here the engine is the 750 taken straight from the 750 range the nc 750 x s forza etc it's one engine for the whole range and it's pretty good especially when it's married to this dct engine on the back a lovely exhaust as you've heard this sounds really really nice 
this looks better than 99% of uh, motorcycles out there. This is a really, really good looking exhaust. Big bikes should be ashamed of themselves putting those big cans on. <laughs> uh, while we're around the back as well, uh, I forgot to mention, single disc, Nissan caliper. Uh, chain driven you can see that through there that's going to annoy some people I know I don't know what the hang up is with chain drives on these sort of bikes it's a motorcycle right down the bottom there that is a handbrake and uh, like the Forza that's up here I haven't got it on at the moment but all you do is you just do that and it locks it in place because of the DCT gearbox when you stop it's in neutral and you can't put it in first gear to just stop it rolling on a hill so that's what that's for very very handy indeed around the back is the back again quite nice looking that isn't it uh, it has got one of these big ugly plastic things that you've got to put on for euro regulations but i suppose you'd probably keep that on there you wouldn't get rid of that not on this sort of bike it actually suits it plus it means you don't get all the crap up your back which is a bonus right around this side if we go down here uh, you've got your chain drive there as i said enclosed in this plastic case don't get hung up on the chain drive like it's something bad. I've never had any problems with the chains on my bikes, yet when I had a silver wing I had to replace the belt and the rollers, so uh, it's not always low maintenance. you just got to keep on top of it. Also got a centre stand under there, and the rear foot pegs are these triangle things here, these footboards, and they're much nicer than the ones on the Forza. I like the way they look, and I do like the way they fold up and disappear. Very, very nice. Uh, not much more I can say about this side apart from it's like the other side. Right, before I go through the dash and the controls on the handlebars, I should just uh, let you have a little look at this. This is a starter, it's keyless, and here you've got fuel, which is down here. And again, that cap comes off completely. I don't want to do it now because it's very dusty around here. But I think it's got about 13.2 litres, the same as the Forza. So that's handy because you can get to the fuel there. If you've got stuff strapped to the back, you don't have to take it all off to get to the fuel. And then this one for the seat, and this one comes up nicely, watch. Look at that. <laughs> and under the seat, it's got a little bit more storage than it had before. That's what I read just before I came out. So that's quite handy. It's quite a big space. I mean, I'm one that packs light anyway, so any space for me is a bonus. And uh, I didn't point it out on the Forza, but this one's got one and it's a USB Type-C charger in there, so you can put your stuff in there and charge it as it goes along. It comes some proper off-roaders. <laughs> hey! You see, that's the road I'm going to go up in a minute where they've just gone, so uh, fingers crossed this little scoop does all right. All right, so let's go through the controls on this side. You've got a rear brake here, that's right. It's rear brake, it's not a clutch. This is a DCT gearbox. You've got your lights here, which is a push to pass. Full beams there. You've got a mode button here, function button here, and a little joystick here. You've got your, your horn here. You've got your indicators, hazard lights. Under here, you've got your minus button. And then on the back, you've got your plus. And that's your manual flappy paddles for when you're in manual mode on the DCT gearbox. The rear brake lever is also fully adjustable here. On this side, you've got your handbrake, you've got your starter, you've got your automatic manual that switches between automatic and using the flappy paddles, and then you've got your neutral and your drive button, and then you can use the mode button to adjust the rider modes. Also, front brake, and again, that is adjustable. To turn it on, you need to just press and hold this button down here. And that's what she looks like. 5 inch TFT screen. I'm going to quickly run through it. On this side, you've got indicators, you've got engine management, you've got your alarm, some kind of lock there, and two LEDs down here, which I still don't know what they do. I didn't know on the Forza, and I still haven't researched. Apologies about that. At the top here, you've got the time, then you've got the temperature. It's not 34 degrees. The sensor's obviously sitting in the sun. It's about 22, but it is nice and warm. I'm not complaining. Neutral, traction control, under here is your traction control off, and then your ABS down there. On this side, you've got your rev counter, you've got your side stand down, fuel gauge, and that's your miles per hour. The mode you're in, uh, parking brakes on, you've got automatic lights and uh, some oil light. I don't know what that is. Uh, I think that'll go off when you're on the move, just like a normal oil light. And all your gizmos down here, your power, your engine braking. D, I still didn't look at that to see what that does from the last one. So again, drop that down in the comment section. Someone might learn from that. Traction control and ABS. You've got your gear indicator. 
and then downstairs here it's telling you what function you're in as in this little bit down the bottom which is adjustable by the joystick here All right so at the bottom you've got trip a trip a consumption uh, trip a average consumption and then an xadv thing on the end if i click it to the right you go trip b all the same except you've got a, a nicer little xadv thing on the right and then your last one is all the stuff as you're going on the fly fuel consumption average consumption that's your reserve trip and your reserve uh, i think it's a countdown or tell you how many liters that you have it's the same on my old africa twin when you get into reserve it will tell you like how much you're into it but it counts up rather than down if this does the same that can be quite not annoying but you have to get used to it if you hold this like that then it changes the screen you get more options i didn't do this on the forza because i couldn't figure it out but now i know because i had a little bit of a play before i came out so hold the joystick and it gives you another display there you've got riding modes and if i go right on that as well it lights up and then you've got shift point so you can change the shift point on the dct gearbox i will assume self-cancelling indicators and then you've got trip a auto reset and economy mode which is obviously off for today <laughs> but let's go into shift point so shift point 6000 so yeah it's uh, set a little bit low at the moment because we're running it in or we're not caning it let's put it that way so that's nice that it's there i'm glad it is there to be fair <laughs> all right let's go back so hold it back and then we go back one so you've got to hold the joystick to get it to move all right so let's go back to function if we go down to display it's got display types and uh, you can have it like that like that analog like that or digital like that actually do you know what i'm going to put it in analog i'm going to have an analog rev counter for the rest of this video all right you can go brightness you can change the background so you can go metallic black or white we've got it in metallic at the moment which is kind of that metal look uh favorite information uh user letter uh, i assume that's uh you can change the wording for your startup or where the xadv is or something like that it might not be i'm just making it up you never know it might be true it might not be you got your dates times your units as in miles per hour uh, you can change it to kilometers per hour etc language default and then uh, bluetooth pairing uh, this has got Bluetooth, but it's Android only, so you can connect your Android devices to this and use the navigation, phone calls, music, etc. And then down the bottom, we've got service, which is uh, just all your service stuff, your maintenance equipment, DCT, uh, and I don't know what else to say about that. It's the boring stuff. We don't dwell on that on this channel. Well, we do. Some say we do. <laughs> the whole thing's boring. And that's it for the dashboard. Let's get back on and ride. No, let's do the lights first, and then we'll get back on and ride. It is going to be quite hard to see because of the sunshine, but you can see the DRLs there, the running lights, the LEDs, and uh, they're on permanently, and they look really, really nice. And obviously LED indicators. Right on the back, we've got LED lights, and that's brake lights, standard lights, and indicators. That's about it for the lights. They do what they're supposed to do. Let's get back on and ride. Oh, it is a warm one. Right, mode. The sticker in gravel now what i've noticed in gravel i've just had a little bit of a play and it doesn't turn the traction control off fully and it doesn't turn the abs off fully at the rear so i don't know you could probably go into user and change all that I have to look at the manual to see if you can do it on here but the standard gravel setting is what we're going to go for when we're going up this lane so we've got a little bit of traction control and a little bit of abs so let's see how we go let's stick it in drive so we've got gravel gear one this is a nice simple lane and by the way it used to be my favorite lane for off-roading because it had ruts mud jumps puddles the works but since lockdown they've made it into this and that's kind of what this bike's about if you're going to go off-road that's what it's designed for these kind of off-road scenarios you get a lot of them in america and australia i think in america they're called fire roads i'm not sure what they're called all over the place but they're more gravelly rather than muddy and off-road green laney like we got in england this i'm going to go out on a limb now and say it's not a very good green lane bike <laughs> there is a little bit of sand up here so that might give us just a little bit of an idea what it's like in sand if you want to take this on the beach for example i don't know why you would but just in case you would so uh yeah let's have some fun <laughs> you can step the back out it will step out but then 
the trash control kicks in brings it all in but it doesn't feel like it's bringing it in harshly it's actually quite smooth it's not too bad actually considering we've got road tires on as well i'd expect it to slip out a little bit more okay it's not the most powerful bike on the planet it's not brutal not like a little single <laughs> but she will step out right so let's have a little bit of a stand up right no chance for me i'm far too tall it does feel like i'm uh, riding a bmx and if you brought the handlebars up they'd be too far this way for me to ride standing up but sitting down on a road like this is pleasant <laughs> you can just cover the back brake with your hand your feet can do all the maneuvering she will slide about <laughs> I mean, I'm on a scooter off-road having sliding fun. <laughs> Whoa, she stepped right out then. <laughs> oh, we are sliding. Yeah, I'm used to standing up on here. You can see the traction control going absolutely crazy because uh, on sand, this thing on road tyres is basically all over the place. But is it fun? <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> oh dear. Let's put the visor down, I'm getting sand in my eyes. <laughs> so yeah, if you have roads like this and you want to have a little bit of fun, as long as they haven't got big ruts, mud, and all that sort of like malarkey where you do need a proper off-roader with 21 inch front wheel maybe 19 minimum then it will do it fine you can have some fun on this <laughs> it does uh, slide out a little bit it's obviously not as maneuverable as a dirt bike but it's not bad it's really well balanced see in the sand you can see the trash control fighting all the time because it is so loose But wow, <laughs> it's, it's mad fun, and I'm on road tyres. <laughs> you just keep backing off the throttle, then throttling up just to make the back slide a little bit. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, we had a good little drift spin there. Problem is I don't want to go too fast because you never know if there's a walk around the corner or something. So I'll only do it when I've got plenty of vision. <laughs> it spins up nicely when it's there in between. So it slides, but doesn't step out too much. It's fantastic. It is fantastic. Even with the trash control on, you can still have fun. On an off-road bike, if it was my 250 off-roader, that probably would annoy me. I want it to slide more. But on this, it's fantastic. It really is good. <laughs> I thought it'd be a lot more cumbersome, a lot more fear factor, not as much fun. I thought we could do it, this road, obviously, because it's not a difficult road by any stretch of the imagination, but I didn't think it would handle it with so much fun, with that grin factor. So uh, let's pull it over here and change it back into sport mode. Now I'm pretty sure you can change this on the fly, but I just wanted to pull over to say that this, on that type of road, was absolutely fantastic it was so much fun it was unreal it was really really good fun i enjoyed it much more than i thought i would so so in that sense of the word the adventure side the normal little gravelly lanes is it an adventure bike it can do it i mean you could do that on any bike to be fair but is it fun doing it oh yes it really is right so we're back in sport now let's do these country lanes we will go and find a petrol station, put a little bit of juice in so we don't run out. Oh, we're back on two bars now. Maybe it was just the way I was throttling up that the fuel was going to the back of the tank. Anyway, they probably don't really want me to go off-road too much on this, so I won't. The other lane I was going to do was a little bit more involved than that. But we will keep it at that for now. Very impressed with its off-road, and I say that loosely, its non-paved road capabilities. Very, very good. Fun. Oh, it's very, very nice. The way it steps out 
is so progressive it doesn't feel like it's out of control at any point I know I ride off-road motorcycles not to any great level but I'm used to the backsliding but it didn't feel snappy at all it felt like that traction control was keeping it all under control but you could still have fun you could still slide it out quite a bit without feeling like you're completely out of control which I am most times off-road let's be fair but anyway back in sport back on the country lanes let's have a little bit of fun oh I don't like this downhill I prefer doing this road uphill but the bike feels so planted I keep forgetting I'm on a scooter I really do I know some people say that just because it's marketing blurb but on this I do. On the Forza, I never thought I was on a motorcycle. Although it handled like a motorcycle more than a scooter, I wasn't under any illusion that it wasn't a scooter. With this, because of the handlebars and probably the colour and the dash, it's like a mini Africa twin. Now, it's not. Don't quote me on that and go out and buy this like it's a, a new age trans Alp. It's not. It is a scooter type motorcycle. So it has its limitations <laughs> in the off-road department. But as an all-rounder, it's bloody good. <laughs> a little bit of a wheelie there. And it sounds really, really good. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera. You could probably only hear wind noise because I've got the visor open, but it sounds really, really throaty. <laughs> a little bit of a wheelie again. It's fun. Now I've got used to it, I'm kind of riding one foot forward and one foot back and I'm alternating depending on the corners the inside leg I put back and the outside leg I keep forward and it makes it really easy to manoeuvre around the corners it's good fun and the fact that you've got these footballs means you can manoeuvre your feet into any position you want to use as leverage still got to be careful on these tyres Oh, a little bit of a spin there coming out. We are on new tyres after all. But again, it didn't feel snappy at all. It just felt like it was sliding, but nothing spectacular. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> to think of it, when it comes to comfort, I think I've found my sweet spot. I'm not quite on the footboards at the front, and I'm not quite on the midpoint. I'm kind of in between at an angle and it sits me right back in the hump, which gives me a straight back. And although I feel slightly more cramped, I haven't got any backache or buttache whatsoever, which I do get on quite a few bikes, being the shape I am. But on this, it really is comfortable. Although I feel like it's a little bit smaller, it's actually really, really comfortable. That's hard to explain. Anyway, let's crack on and have some fun on this lane. You can forget the fact that this is a scooter. Forget it. And this road's a little bit gravelly as well. A little bit bumpy. And it smooths it all out nicely. Oh, and it sounds good. It really does sound good. You can have fun on this you can go fast you can't go stupid fast but you can go fast enough that is for sure <laughs> outrageous outrageous <laughs> oh dear when i think back to scooters of old and i'm sorry to keep calling it that but that's what it's going to be called it's going to be called a scooter by the majority of people let's face it I don't want to offend it because I think it's so much much better than a scooter this if I think it in scooter terms is the best scooter ever made hands down best looking and for me just does everything I want from this bike the DCT gearbox is a peach in this absolute peach and now it's got sport modes gravel modes user modes rain mode standard oh you've got a little bit of choice the only downside is it's got no connectivity to my iphone so that's a bit of an oversight but for now 
we're going to have to make do with going the wrong way. I wanted to go up there. <laughs> right, let's uh, go across here. See, you can do that on this bike, even though I'm in sport mode. Oh, we're a little bit slidey. <laughs> right, and that's where this stands out from general scooters. Because you wouldn't do something like that on a general scooter. Whereas this, you will. Right, so we're on our way back now, so we're cruising, so let's uh, change it into standard mode. As you can see, it's flashing there because I'm on the go. If I throttle off, there you go, it switches into standard. So we're now in standard mode. I'm going to keep it in standard all the way back just to cruise. You've also got a little cubby hole here. I haven't shown you that, have I? Let's pull in here and I'll show you the cubby hole. It's not that exciting, but you're going to have a little look anyway. <laughs> I'm only going to do it with the, the crash helmet. I'm not going to get the fancy one out, the fancy one, my phone. Right, so it doesn't lock. So I don't know what you can see in there, but this one's got a lip. It's not really that big. It's a weird shape. I don't know what you could put in there, but it has got a little lip and it's not lockable. It's just a hole basically. And I would put in there probably a hat, some rags, that sort of thing. Would I put my phone in there? Probably not. If you watched my Forza video, I said that bike was nearly perfect for what it was supposed to do and surpassing my expectations. This is another level up, but this is more up my street. That's what this is. This is more you can go anywhere on it. And I like a bike where you don't have to stop because it gets a little bit greasy, a little bit muddy. So that leaves me to say and conclude, would I have one in my garage? You're damn right I would. I think this thing is fantastic amazing absolutely amazing i really like the old xdv for what it was but i probably wouldn't have had one because there were things missing and i don't know what it is whether it's this throttle by wire these user modes i don't know the chassis on this feels better the ergonomics feel better it feels more comfortable it certainly feels quicker than the old one it's all round it has stepped its game up as I said, the old one, no. This one, yes. I would even go as far to say, and I am sticking my neck out massively here, that after the Africa Twin, I would consider this. I really would. I've enjoyed that little adventure. It's been fantastic. Right, so let's end the video here. Once again, thank you very much to Doble's Motorcycles down in Coulston. I shall leave a link to their website down below. In the descriptions box, I shall also leave the link to the full specifications for this down there, the Honda XADV, the 2021 version. So go and check that out and have a little look. I shall also leave the link for the Forza 750 video that I did last week. You can go and check that out. And there'll also be a link at the end of this video in those end cards, so you can just tap on there and have a little look on that one. Thank you once again to Rob down there, the finance manager, and Ian, the general manager. You know I love you. Hugs from a distance, people. Hugs from a distance. But those real hugs will be coming in soon. Right, so that just leaves me to say, don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share, to do all those things that you need to do. Also, hit that notification bell so you guys can get the drop on these videos. If you want to leave a comment, leave that downstairs in the comment section oh it's been a glorious day i've really enjoyed myself the sun is out the liner has finally come out of my jacket we are smiling summer's coming even though they said it's going to snow next week but summer's coming i shall see you on the next one you know i love you all stay safe fish out get all your bags get out my house i don't want your stuff around i never did you wrong but you did me wrong so go ahead get go, gone, get gone. Get all your bags, get out my house I don't want your stuff around I never did you wrong But you did me wrong So go ahead and get gone